Hi, I'm Mark Hummel. I hope you're enjoying the Harmonica Party and the other content that we post on our channel. Now you can become part of the show for the price of a cheap cup of coffee. For three bucks a month, you can help bring the blues and the stories to you. Okay, so we're back with Curtis Salgado. And uh, he was just talking about the first time that the two of us met at, at uh, J.J. Malone's house through Sonny Rhodes, who called me up and said, Mom, Sonny Rhodes, I need you to get over to J.J. Malone's house because I got somebody I want you to meet, a young harmonica player from Eugene, Oregon, Curtis Salgado. So come on over. Get your ass over here. And, he's, and then he's, he said... He says, he's as good as you. He, might be <laughs> he did. That's I, great. When you do that, I stood That's there. I was funny. standing and looking right at him That's when he did perfect. that call. That's so funny, Where, man. And you, I think you should come over. Yeah, so and, I did. I came over, yeah, and me that, and you hung out af all afternoon, and that was That's how, how we, we met. became friends. And yeah. we were playing with, uh, J.J. was with playing JJ, And he piano. was playing guitar, I think, too. He was a yeah. fantastic guitar player. He was. I don't yeah. remember that. I remember yeah, he was an awesome remember guitar Remember that he had an upright? piano up against the wall right and the living room was practically empty just the piano right. on that and you and i stood right. there you had a reel to reel we tape. checked each other out right it's like, that's right it's like this no I, we, you know. we got along it seemed to no. me we got along right away yes yeah. we got along kind of like, right. no, like you're no, talking about gary but you know you're like wow because we're two knucklehead yeah. harmonica players right and, and we're i don't know what really it is. young i want to say we were probably and, I, I was about 21 at that point yeah because that was like 1975 or 76 Right. So I would have been about 20, 21. Really? I was young, man. We're both young. Yeah, but you felt you were more mature than I was. <laughs> I was. So That's I remember this. Perception. This is what I mean by pushing. Is like, yeah. let's see what you got. I, oh, yeah, I yeah, yeah. I'll never, yeah. you know. That's true. Yeah. I got a side story. I was yeah. at the San Francisco Blues Festival when William Clark comes up and goes, hey, I hear you play. I mean, you're Curtis Salgado. Yeah, you know, my name's William Clark. And he goes, uh, let's go over here. I want to see how good you are. Yeah, that's what everybody did that. And, you know, and it was, I can like, you win. Yeah. You go ahead. <laughs> I don't, he was about 6'9". Yeah, or I remember you know, like, Portnoy. The first over. time I ever met Portnoy. my ass behind the car or something. First time I ever met Portnoy, Jerry Portnoy was the same thing. And he goes, oh, you play harp, huh? I said, yeah, I know Rick Esther. And he goes, come over here, man. I want to hear you play. Yeah, so and I can then, see if I have any. Yeah. So I play, and he goes, well, I can't show you nothing. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> Which yeah, is yeah. pretty nice. I can't show you nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, William just wanted to win. Exactly. Yeah, you know. yeah, well, little Charlie's the other one. When I met little Charlie, he was a harmonica player, and he goes, I go, uh, a good. He go, no, he, he goes like this. He was a very good harmonica he, player. He was. He goes <laughs> like this. He goes, he goes, oh, you want to play, huh? <laughs> Let me hear you play. So I play some for him. He goes, Let's go have a cutting contest. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need, yeah. though. That's what we need. That was, uh, so that was, it, I was going to tell the yeah, story go ahead. of you. Yeah, so he does that. He calls, and that's how we met. And um, before, he, and you opened up the whole other stuff between you and Gary Smith and then me meeting these guys. So I have, um, when I was at the studio, so let's go back to Gary Smith. I yeah. don't know you yet. Sonny Rhodes is going, man, you should have me come down to Eugene. You know, I'll come down there and play. And I can, would Luther come? You know, I'm interested in Sonny Rhodes very much so. And I'm right. interested in Luther. Right. But um, there's a lot of in-between gray areas I can't remember. Except that, that would lead to me talking to the band that I was with in Eugene. And we called ourselves the Nighthawks, as I said. And I'd go, I want to bring these guys here. And I want to, you know, let's put on a blues festival. Just like Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney. Come on, let's put on a play. <laughs> yeah. Let's go put on a blues festival. Yeah, let's go put on a blues festival. So now, did Buddy Akasich have anything to do with that? Uh, yes, at the very beginning. And here's how Buddy got involved. Uh, um, he will be there tonight, too. Yes. Yeah, I talked to him already. So, uh. I'm playing with the Nighthawks at Murphy's and Me, and this is, you know, the timeline is goofy here, so skip the timeline, but it's after I meet Sonny Rhodes, we put on a, um, 
blues festival and i met this guy just before we really started moving forward with this idea first i had to talk the nighthawks into it and they were into it and in my head i'm thinking i want to hang out with there's nobody in eugene oregon like this but if you're going to learn how to play this music which i'm learning off of records and playing and doing this and just playing every night music and we did everything from frank zappa to uh, to um, the miracle Smokey Robinson, we turn around and play. You know, um, uh, we turn around and play uh, "Keep on Drinking" by Johnny Young, and then we play <laughs> "King Kong" by Frank Zappa. Wow! And then we turn around and play. You know, uh, that's a hell of a medley, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I just want to make love to you, Mighty Waters, right, right. Uh, James Cotton stuff, uh, yeah. Charlie Musselwhite song, all, but basic, basically everything. Yeah, you know, sounds like it. And uh, so, Buddy Akasich met me in a bar, uh -huh. and uh, Murphy's and me. I got to get my thinking together. So we're at Murphy's and me, and the band is quitting. And Buddy came up to me and said, "Who are you? Whatever. Look, I'll just. What can I do for you?" I mean, I'll, anything you need, is there anything I can be a part of? Basically, to put it in my terms, he just came up and said, what do you want me to do? What can I do? I want to be part of this. Right. And I just looked at him and said, yeah, you could go down and to California and get these two blues guys. And it was Sonny Rhodes. And I was trying to get Sonny Rhodes and Luther Tucker and Floyd Dixon, who I was aware of. Right. And a uh, little side note that I'm really proud of. I brought John Bellucci, Hey Bartender, because Bellucci wanted to sit in. Oh, right, right, and right. And I go, what do you want to do? And, and Bellucci goes, let's do Jailhouse Rock. I said, <laughs> no way. I, that's no way. It's, that's too corny. That's corn. Right, I said, sure. that's corny. I'm yeah. not going to do that. And he goes, Johnny, be good. I said, everybody and their dog does Johnny, be good. <laughs> I'll bring you a song. And wow. I brought him Hey Bartender. Which, in turn, and I got to tell you this story, years later in the and 19th... this was during Animal House being filmed in Eugene. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't... Um, uh, by this point, no. By the time I was talking to Bellucci, I did not know who he was. I still right. haven't seen right. Saturday Night Live. Right. I don't know how important he is or right. how popular or how cl uh, creative creativity yeah. that yeah. is. I have nothing. don't know any of that. Probably a good thing. And, uh, well, man, you know, that guy was... Was was badass. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and but I had yeah probably a good thing. I I see what you're saying, but just like I didn't know who he was, I didn't care except that he is interested in this music. Sure, and that's yeah. how we got together. Right. He wants to learn. I want to teach. Sure, I want to tell everybody who these people are. I hear. I you. want everybody to have credit where credit is due. Right. It's just part of my nature and I'm not trying to be cool it is part of my nature yeah like that isn't that Zeppelin didn't do that song well, yeah I think Sonny Boy of, Wilson I, think, did. I think all of us have that in yeah us. yeah yeah oh, you know, it's if we're true. really into it that's right we're very into it. into it so uh yeah. um so I'll get this so I got a big validation when in the 1990s at the Chicago Blues Fest um this girl comes over and goes Floyd Dixon's Wants to see you. Wow. Floyd is here. And I was playing with uh, you. Oh, right, yeah, right, 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 right. That's right, with uh, me and Clark. Yeah. That's right. right. And uh, uh, I go, really? And he goes, yeah, he's over at the main stage. We went over at the, I went over to the main stage. And Floyd Dixon, we hug and stuff. How are you doing and stuff? Curtis, he says, I got to I gotta want to tell you this. If it wasn't for you, I made the biggest royalty check I had ever received in my career. And to me, all of these thoughts are coming together in a nanosecond. As one is his careers, we're talking nineteen forties yeah. after the war. Oh, yeah. He's making seventy eight, right? Right. And this is the biggest royalty check. And, and, and here he is telling me, and he gave me credit. He well, says, "If yeah, it wasn't as for he you," should. and, as and he, he should, said, yeah. "Well, I didn't feel to me. I was just I was I got choked up." And I go, "That's I so nice of you." Yeah. And uh, he goes, yeah. I go, well, if you don't mind me asking, how much was the check? I mean, what was your royalty check? He goes, my first royalty check was for $78,000. Wow. So I'm a, I, yeah. I'm, 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 I want to be always accurate. So 78, 70, I'm going to say 78. He said over $70,000. 
So I hear 78 in my head. So $78,000 and I thought, wow, that's it. And again, I'm thinking, what's, you know, so he must have bought it because, <laughs> do you remember he used to have an office in San Francisco? And what it was, it was basically a, it was basically a wall phone at the end of a bar. Wow. And that was it. See, I that didn't was know his that. office. I didn't know. And that. you'd go to his office, which was, you know, there off of Grant Street or wow. something. And it was a it was a pay phone at the end of the bar. Too and much. there was a box of records. What a and trip. you know what I bought? What? Freight Twist. Oh yeah, yeah, Late yeah, yeah. Freight Late Twist by Johnny which Guitar is Watson. Johnny Guitar Watson. And that's him on that. That's him yeah, on that right. Room, doing right. that, you know. I, and right. it sold as a as a Floyd Dixon tune. Wow. And when I got home and played, it was like, holy Christ, this is Johnny Guitar yeah, Watson. You know, yeah, so, that's heavy that's, duty, man. So anyhow, you know, so here he is. I'm thinking $78,000, what's this guy going to do? And this is the truth. Uh, so he goes, oh, man. I, he looked off like this and took his glasses. He had shades on. He looked off in the distance. He goes, I spent it all on the horses. <laughs> oh, I had a wonderful time. <laughs> and I tell that story because when people want to know about the blues. Yeah, that's the blues. It, that that's is the blues. The blues. Well, well, I just, I had a great time. I spent it all on the horses. One of my favorites oh, is man. one time Charles Brown goes, he goes, well, you know, <laughs> back when, back when I was really playing the ponies, <laughs> I was a millionaire about three times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk. Let's talk to that. So I, so I will end up going, now we're all over the map. I come, make friends with you. You and I are playing with Johnny Rogers John, and Sonny Lane. Jimmy, and Johnny Jim, Waters. Johnny right, Waters right, right. and Sonny Lane. Right. And, and I have a story to tell where I take my girlfriend, the girl I lost my virginity with, named Penny Perrin. And Penny and I flew to stay with Sonny Rhodes right. in the hood right. in Oakland. Right. And uh, we were probably the only, you know, uh, you know, young something white kids yeah. for miles yeah. around. Yeah. And that was one of the best experiences, you know. I mean, it was like, okay, boom, yeah. here it is. Yeah. And it's a nice neighborhood. Yeah. Nice people, nice neighborhood yeah. stuff. And Sonny Rhodes' part was like Curtis. Curtis, uh, like, what are we going to do today? And, and Sonny's like, well, we're going to go take my TV and go to the pawn shop. And so we go to the pawn <laughs> shop and I'm bopping along. Like, oh, boy, you know, he, let's go to the pawn shop. And he hands in his TV and he goes, that's my guitar. Up there. And so he take his guitar and we go and do a gig. Wow. And then the next day... He'd take it back and get his take TV his, back. Get his TV back. Oh, and then he had man. a son, Calvin. Right. Calvin was really nice. Very hip, very streetwise, of course. And Calvin would roll up. We'd buy a big bag of weed. I got another one for you. This experience is like, is, you know, Penny and I are on Mars. Or alternate... Uh, uh, alternate uh, yeah, universe. alternate universe, yeah. And... Um, like one morning we would, we woke up one morning it was about seven o'clock we spent like a week with Sonny, in the hood, and um, and it was great except you could just see you know, big differences yeah, yeah and I'm not talking poverty and this and that it was just how it was culturally ran. culturally yeah. thank you and so we wake up one morning and. His, he had a daughter named Renee and a son named Calvin, and they're arguing. They're not arguing. With, they're arguing with a group of kids, and I open up the window and look out, and there they are throwing dice. Wow. And they're arguing over money. Motherfucker. Wow. She's like, you kids shut up out there. You know, his, I can't remember his first wife's name. Betty. Betty, really yeah. nice. Yeah. And uh, she was like, you know, Kids quiet down out there, that kind of stuff, and they're arguing over. And, they're, and I'm watching them roll dice against the curb, throw their quarters and their dollar bills and right. their stuff. You know, that ain't happening. No, when that I ain't grew happening up. in Eugene. That ain't <laughs> happening in Eugene. That isn't happening in my household. No. You know, no. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, 
And my father was a baker and stuff, and where we were from, my father begged to work for the Wayne Bakery, but we weren't middle class, but you can't tell, you know. Right. You know, the folks is, uh, but this is totally different. This is a whole other culture. It's an education. It's an education. Yeah, this is for sure. far more mature and far yeah. more streetwise than where I'm coming up. Well, I, was I in fights as a little kid? Yeah. Did I do all this? He says, but this is just a whole different thing. Different ball game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, they're dealing, they're gambling. But you know? but I mean there's you know there's there's a lot to be said to be a part of something like that, even if it's just for a minute, to kind of get some kind of feel for for what African American life is like outside of what most white people don't even bother to get to know. True. Yep. You know? That's far better than I could have put it. That's what yeah. I'm trying to say. Yeah. And, and so here's another one. So so, so, and we'd sit and smoke weed and watch television. Calvin would roll it all up and put all of it in a bowl. And, you know, Betty make everybody. It was very, very, it was fun. Yeah. And yeah. Sonny was a great host. Yeah. And this is what would happen. So he goes, let's go. Let's get. So we ran out of weed at some point. And uh, um, we were there for a few days, you know. And uh, it's like a, it's like a two week vacation. Right. And Sonny and I walked down the street. And this guy goes, hey man, want some clum? Want some Colombian? Want some clum? I'm going, what is he wants? You know, yeah, you know, Sonny Rose voice, yeah. what do you have? What do you have on your stuff? And this guy reaches in and he pulls out these joints that are toothpick thin. It's just like, and I'm thinking to myself, I smoke weed at this time, you know. A lot of it. And I'm looking at, Jesus, that is the sorriest looking joint I've ever seen. But Sonny sees the same thing and he goes, man, what are you doing? What do you think I am? Do you know who I am? I'm Sonny Rose. I'm Sonny Rose, the disciple of the blue. The Sheik of West Oakland. <laughs> That's it. That. That's exact. He goes, I'm yeah. Sonny Rose. And we're like this. And the guy goes, oh, and opens up another side of his coat. <laughs> On this side, he's got all this in the grocery store. He's a and I've never seen He's that like a before. walking drug he's store. He's a, a walking drug store with one on this That's side. One of the, I just yeah. thought, wow, man. You know, this isn't just out of the movies. This is right down the street right. in California. This he goes is how like it this. Works. And then he pulls out a great big fat bomber. Right. Goes right. here, you know. And did he give it to him? Yeah, he gave oh, it to great. him and yeah. then sold a few more and we went back to the house and, and Sonny smoked was an the important bomb. man. He was. And uh oh man, just he was hilarious. Well, so he a, introduced it, me to you. Uh Gary yeah. introduced me. That's how yeah, uh, I've kind of lost my direction here, but uh, now did did you know, did, man? Did Craig think did of Craig all the people down here? Sonny Rhodes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he met him and talked to him. I don't I mean, remember. He definitely, he definitely knew uh, Frankie Lee, as I recall. Oh yeah, so he you want the Frankie yeah. Lee thing? Yeah. So Robert Cray and Richard Cousins and myself are hanging out together in Eugene, and Robert and Richard keep talking about Bobby Murray. And Bobby Murray, it's like, I'd only met him a fun time. He was a Japanese American and he is hilarious. And he is the, uh, he is, he has just absorbed the black culture, right? And he hasn't, and he will. And we, he hasn't moved yet, but he will move down to Oakland. Yep. And he scored a gig with little Frankie Lee, who's the cousin of, my hero, Johnny Guitar Watson. Right. And he brought back this record. And we just thought Bobby Murray, and we still, Bobby Murray was like, and Robert, we all felt this way. This yeah. is like Bobby yeah. Murray is a bad mosquito. And uh, I don't know, he's something else. That guy is something else. Like he could be a stand up comedian, he could be whatever, he's a killer guitar player. And just his whole, just his whole demeanor is hip. <laughs> and, and so we I got, were like this. I got some good stories. Yeah, right. I know. Bobby, we won't tell him right here, though. Right, right. <laughs> Bobby could drink. Yes, he could. Right. But and he could get in fights. Yes. <laughs> With guys about 10 times, times his, his size. size. <laughs> but that's all you have to say right, right there. That's right. But man, as a person and stuff, he's a yeah. beautiful person. No, he is a beautiful guy. I mean, you. you you know, I don't know if the folks out there, we're both clean and sober, and I'm really right. glad that we are. 
you know. Yeah, I'm sure Bobby you is know, too. Shit, yeah. Otherwise, he wouldn't be alive. No, neither would we. But Bobby Murray is, we're like this. He is moved to Oakland and he's playing with little Frankie Lee. And I hear this record and he does Strung Out. And right. I can't remember what the other side is. Which you you put in your I, repertoire. I, I did right. put that in my... I and that's the one it. with Johnny Guitar Watson. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny's right. producing it. Right. And, and uh, little Frankie Lee is singing it. Right. So me and a friend of mine, who I was teaching harmonica to back in high school, and or, you know, I hipped him to the blues, like you get hip, you know. So Michael Muthart. Oh, he, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Michael and I have known each other a long time. And he's like, what are you doing? What is this stuff? You know, whatever. And he got interested and he started buying the record. And then, of course, Bill Rhodes helped with that right. too and stuff. Right. And Muthart's a natural, you know. So anyhow, him and I drive to uh, the My Club. I might have met Mike Muthart on that trip. I think so. I go way back with right. him, back to when we first met. Yeah. We went to the My Club, right. drove around to right. Freya, and we were right. the only two Caucasians right. in an all-black club. Yeah. And it was, I've got some stories of that. And there is the Japanese-American. Right. That's our kind of our ticket in. And I saw Frankie Lee sing the shit out of it. I mean, just, yeah. it was so, it was yeah. like, this was, to me, in, this was a solid, beautiful black experience. Yeah. And it was a killer band. And Frankie Lee is doing Johnny Taylor, ZZ Hill, yeah. his own stuff, you know, all this stuff. And then... And that guy put I out, mean, he put out no matter oh, what. Oh, I man. saw that guy put out in front of like five people one night. Oh, yeah. And it was He's like, in the zone. it was like, Jesus, man, if this yeah. guy can do this, this is like saying something about commitment. Right, right. You know? You Well, you yeah. learn from that. Yeah, you did. S same thing from, yeah, yeah that's showbiz. That's yep. what it should be like. Exactly. Um, he put the mic down on the floor. Right. And walked away. I'd never seen that trip. I know he didn't invent it. But he could put the mic down and sing. The band would come down. And he'd sing all around the and house. And he'd sing yeah. all around the house. Right. Another time, that uh, I, I went to the mic club. Um, I saw Roy Brown do that one time, too. Uh, yeah. I, I went to uh, the mic club at another time. This first time with Michael was full. The second time wasn't. So I've only been there twice. But the second time, some woman was asleep on the bar. <laughs> he woke her up. Hey! Watch the show. <laughs> I'm performing here. I love it. I mean, that's and great. talk about a hard crowd. Yeah, yeah. You know what that's I mean? a hard he was crowd a, when they're sleeping. And he was it. So that's who, with being next to Robert, and Robert just singing so dead on the street, he never missed, whatever. But this is like with all sorts of shading and, right. and the, a, a true gospel singer. Yeah. And he would sing his stuff. And he told me once, he goes, you remind me of Etta James. You're... you're goes your voice your timbre you sound because i had a higher voice then and stuff but um i didn't take it as a compliment I, I i mean i did i took it as a compliment yeah you should i did yeah. not you didn't yeah, back when then. i was saying no no yeah. what i'm saying is i i wasn't going to say i didn't take it as a compliment right, right. i didn't get bothered by that right you know it's right. like oh wow thing, yeah and um buddy ace is the other one now now we're talking about me and who taught me but right. it was little frankie lee and I had a cassette tape of that show. Well, you know what's interesting is... It, and I practiced it over and over and over. I was going to say, uh, uh, Frankie and Sonny became really thick. Right. Those guys became like best friends. Sonny Lane? No, I'm talking about Sonny Rhodes. Oh, Sonny, Sonny Rhodes, Rhodes and, yes. and Frankie became yes. really... They were like, you know, they... Unfortunately, they were both in their addictions at the same time. Right, right. But no, they were they were they ended up moving to the East Coast at the same time together. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I didn't, New Jersey. I didn't. Yeah, by this point, I'm out of their, I'm out of their scope. Right. I saw. I would see Sonny, but that's years later. Right. Um, I used to run into Sonny everywhere. Really. All over the continent. I believe it. I mean, literally, I would run into him, and I'd go into, like, the uh, Cecil Hotel in Vancouver, and there'd be Sonny getting a Coke out of the machine. Yeah. <laughs> and go, what the hell are you doing here? Well, same thing you're doing here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, and then we'd be playing some gig in, like, uh, 
Oh man, uh, what's the town in South Dakota? Deadwood, South Dakota or something, you know? And, and, and there's Sonny pulling up in his van with like a little minivan with like six guys jumping out. Right, right. <laughs> and they drove all the way from like, you know, DC or something. Right. Yeah. God. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he, um, after I got more, you know, onto my life and stuff, I rarely saw Sonny, but I did see him. And you know, that guy, uh, Dwayne, brought yeah, him in yeah. recently before. Yeah. So I, I started seeing Sonny again in the last few years. Right. Not a lot. Well, I'm in Oregon. one of the gigs we did, I remember. Yeah. 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 But yeah, let me say, Sonny Rhodes, the guy was a singing fool. So Sonny Rhodes, little Frankie Lee, and Buddy Ace were the guys that I had hands-on. Right. Experience. And, and Buddy yeah. Ace is literally someone who sat down with me, and he was in Hawaii, and we were both in Hawaii together, hmm. which is a long story, but... Uh, he sat down there and we spent a couple of days. Um, I go, you know, we were at the same resort and I'd hang out with him. And he goes, You got to learn how to worry a note. Wow. That's what he called. Him. What do you mean, worry? Well, he goes, You know, a lot of people, they sing the blues too quick. You got to milk the word. Yeah, you gotta that's worry. interesting. Wow. So somebody you listen to, uh, Mike Bloomfield go, uh, when I met you, baby, baby, you were just right. sweet 16. Instead of taking and the then, time. And then, then, then yeah. you know, instead of, when I right. met you, baby, right. baby, you were just right. sweet 16. Yeah. You know? And so and much like, of that, oh, and so each much, word, each so thing, much yeah. of that comes from the thing of being able to work within right. the melody. Right. Because that's how come Bloomfield would sing it so fast. Right. He didn't no, they're not. Work with they're the thinking melody. about yeah. playing. They're thinking about the guitar. They're playing the guitar, right. and I want to get my riffs in. Right. They're not thinking about singing. Yeah. And really, the blues and stuff, whatever you know, harmonica, violin, yeah. guitar, piano, this and that. But it's about singing. It sure is. And that's the vocal that's music it. first. Yes, that's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. Which a lot of people have missed. Yeah. Especially yeah. the newcomers. Well, and I think so much of that comes from the fact that instruments are such a major part of it now. Right. Compared to back in the day. Right. You know. And check this out. So B.B. King doesn't sound like Freddie King, who doesn't sound like Albert King, who doesn't sound like Big Ivory Joe Hunter, right. who doesn't sound like Donnie Washington, who doesn't sound like Big, uh, uh, Big Mama Thornton, who doesn't sound like... On it. None of those right. people. Yeah. Sam Cooke doesn't yeah. sound like so and so, doesn't sound like so and so. Yeah. Wilson Pickett doesn't sound like right. Sam Cooke, who doesn't sound like... all of those people, all of the great hits, you know. Um, well, let's get a little a little off track a little. Willie Mabin doesn't right. sound like Eddie Boyd, who doesn't sound like they all have distinct voices, e yep. even the big hit ones. Yep. You know, Brooke Benton doesn't sound like, um, you know. It's funny how it's funny Stevie how Stevie Wonder, who doesn't it, sound like Marvin Gaye, who it, doesn't sound it's like. It's interesting any. how the older you get, the more you want your own style too. Yeah. You know what I mean? You better. When find you're it. young, you might go, "Well, I want to sound just like so and so," but but as you get older, you go, "I want my own style. I want something yeah. that people hear me and go, that's so and so." I. I don't know if it's getting older. I yeah. just think if you want to mature, yeah. because a record company yeah. is going to go, we already have a Stevie Wonder. Right, right. Exactly. We already have a there. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Remember that one guy was really cool that we'd see at the San Francisco Blues Festival who sang just like something blue. What, oh, Little what, Joe Blue. Little Joe Blue. Yeah, Man, sang just like B.B. King. Nailed yeah. B. B. Yeah, King. Yeah, he could nail B.B. King. But there's already a B.B. B. King. Right, that's you right. Know? Yeah. you got to find your own thing. Yeah, that's and right. That's, and that's what's... I am not hearing um, in modern contemporary pop music. Yeah. And a lot in blues. There's some cats coming out there that, you know, has got their own thing. But you got to find your own voice. You got to be influenced, but then you got to find it. And, and then it's hard, that's hard to define. Well, what's my own style? If I'm taking all of these, you know, just the way Hopefully it is. Hopefully it's like, a I mix of everything. Yeah. You know, hopefully yeah. it is that mix of all these different people and that somehow out of that you do get your own thing. Yeah. You know? I like to talk about singing with Rick Estrin a lot. He's a, yeah. He's an influence big, on me. Big fan of all those. Yeah. But he, he puts things yeah. into a perspective. Right. We better um, run. We got to do the, uh, the sound check here in a minute. But Curtis...
Thank you so much, sir. I can't believe sir. we're sitting here. Yeah. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Hi, I'm Mark Hummel. I hope you're enjoying the Harmonica Party and the other content that we post on our channel. Now you can become part of the show for the price of a cheap cup of coffee. For three bucks a month, you can help bring the blues and the stories to you.